now after the laryngeal cartilages let us see the inlet of the larynx as well as some muscles now this is tongue so this side comes the anterior this side comes the posterior we have seen this as a thyroid cartilage above that this is the hyoid bone and this was hyoid bone then thyroid cartilage below that you can also feel here the cricoid cartilage now going on the posterior aspect to see for the interior now we have taken the incision through the lamina of the cricoid what we have seen cricoid cartilage is in the form of ring and the lamina now we have taken the incision through the lamina of the cricoid cartilage you can see this the cricoid cartilage lamina of the cricoid cartilage and now we can see the interior of the larynx interior of the larynx so here was the tongue now this is epiglottis which is having this upper free margin and here is the inlet now in the inlet you can very well see there are two folds this uh, this is the superior fold and the inferior one this one is called as vestibular fold and this as a vocal fold vocal fold and in the midline if you go down you can also see one elevation this is called as epiglottic tubercle now this is a posterior surface of this epiglottis going down you can see vestibular fold on both side and vocal fold on both side now there is a gap in between these two fold vestibular fold and the vocal fold so this is that gap now this gap is called as the ventricle of the larynx or the sinus of the larynx or it is also called as sinus of morgagni now the area between the two vestibular folds area between the two vestibular folds is called as rima vestibuli the area between the two vocal folds is called as rima glottidis rima glottidis and the area below this part is called as infraglottic part okay so this was the vocal folds of both side this is a sinus of the larynx and these two are the vestibular fold now if i close this lamina again you can make out this as a epiglottic fold on both side and these two swellings for the carniculate and the cuneiform and here would be the arytenoid situated on both side over this lamina of the cricoid cartilage now one muscle you can make out which is coming from this posterior surface of this lamina of the cricoid cartilage and it is going over the arytenoid or the posterior surface of the muscular process of arytenoid so this is posterior cricoarytenoid you can make out these fibers they are oblique one so this one muscle we can see posterior cricoarytenoid and there is one more muscle which is visible here between the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage so this was the thyroid cartilage and here is the cricoid cartilage in between that this one is cricothyroid situated obliquely from the cricoid to the thyroid that's why cricothyroid